With each new console generation, there is a push towards better visuals. Whether that be increasing the bitrate from 8 to 16, adding more and more polygons, that's all been a standard of the gaming industry for decades. But what if I told you, none of that really matters? Don't get me wrong, I think updates to graphics are important. They allow for more information to be transferred to the player in a concise manner instead of holding the controller in one hand and every game manual you've ever had in the other. Yeah, I can work with this. However, gamers are spoiled when it comes to graphics. You've got games like Forza Horizon 5 and Horizon Forbidden West, well, on the horizon, and they've reached a level of realism never seen before. Just look at Microsoft's newest flight simulator. Heart with wings, check. In the sky, check. Yup, that's a plane. Games, to me, have always been about telling a story, being able to hang out with friends, or get immersed in a world, or all of those at the same time. So if that feeling never dissipates, but it's a pixel art game instead of a hyper-realistic game, it never really loses its importance, style, and swagger. At the end of the day, games are an art form, and art has a style. It's all about a developer's vision for their creation. Let's take a look at Cuphead, one of my personal favorite games from 2017, and one of the most artistically unique games of all time. It's all hand-drawn art that matches its early 20th century vibe perfectly. The visuals complement the gameplay, which complements the music, and overall adds to a very succinct gameplay experience. Now, if you look at most indie games, it's not that hard to find a pattern. 2D platformers or top-down games. Most often they use pixel art or simple sprite-based animations. And for good reason. This is because it's a lot easier to draw this... ...than whatever magic that was. Now, let's address the counter-argument. Some may say that more realistic visuals allows for more immersive experiences, and I can address this argument in a sentence. No. I knew this poster would come in handy someday. In a longer sentence, immersion is more than just visuals. You can easily become immersed in a world no matter how ugly it is. You may be immersed because you sympathize with one of the characters, you're along for whatever journey they're going on, or your imagination fills in the rest of the gaps. This happens plenty with older games. Many have described games like Metal Gear Solid as immersive, but look at it, I can barely distinguish Snake's head from a cube. The same thing happens with games from the N64, GameCube, PlayStation, and PlayStation 2 eras. The unfortunate downside of modern graphics is we've been spoiled. Things look too good now. We're so used to modern graphics that something like the return of the Obra Dinn looks awful. Which leads me to my next point. Take a second to imagine playing Bloodborne in the style of the Link's Awakening remake. It wouldn't quite have the same punch that Bloodborne does. That's why art styles are so important. Every artist in the history of forever has their own individual art style that people can get attached to. That's why they're so famous. Everyone gets attached to an incredible artist from Picasso to Van Gogh to Shigeru Miyamoto. They're all known for their uniqueness. And yeah, one of those is not quite like the other, but my point still stands. Every artist has a meaning behind where their piece looks like that. Even if I don't quite get it. And they designed it in such a way that if it were expressed in an alternate manner, medium, or style, the very meaning behind it would be lost. Unless, especially in the case of video games, there's a financial motive behind it. Now, why exactly does all this matter? First off, it doesn't, I'm talking about video games right now. None of this matters. But second, the artistic expression is one of the building blocks of good gameplay. And as I said earlier, what really matters is what's behind the graphics. All of that sweet, sweet, glorious gameplay. However, it's clear to me that not everyone sees it this way. For some, it's easy to brush away subpart graphics and assume that the game's just bad purely because it doesn't look like a AAA masterpiece. And yeah, in some parts I'm guilty of this too. I'm not afraid to admit that when I first started playing Valheim, I was really critical of how the graphics looked. But as I kept going, and as you should too when you first play a new game, it grew on me. Not only in it something that I tolerated, but something that I began to love. And yeah, it's not as polished, pretty, or other synonyms as the other Viking games are, but I knew in the back of my head that it had been made by only three people, and I trusted the reviews I had seen, so I persevered. The gameplay was fantastic, an incredible survival game that I highly recommend you check out and support the small team of developers. Keep in mind that just because the game has a lower polygon count, the graphics aren't bad. Take a look at Celeste, the graphics are incredibly simple, about on par with SNES games, and it looks stunning. It's got a beautiful color palette across all of its chapters, and it's not just Celeste. Take a look at games like Dead Cells, Narita Boy, and Sonic Mania, even Minecraft, and you can see that critics and you are beginning to look beyond the graphics into what makes the game good. 
I'll leave you with some games I recommend that can certainly make you question if the push towards better graphics is really necessary. As I said earlier, Celeste is wonderfully stunning and an emotional game that I just can't get enough of. Unbeatable is a very fun rhythm game with a beautiful art style and incredible music. I'd recommend you check it out while it's in early access with a demo and give feedback to all of the developers. If you're a fan of roguelikes, I'd highly recommend that you check out Magisite. It's a super fun survival based roguelike akin to Minecraft or Terraria. And if you like Terraria and have already played Magisite, give Starbound a chance. If you're a fan of turn based RPGs and you somehow still haven't played it, play Undertale and subsequently Deltarune. And those should surely quench your gaming thirst for a while. And hopefully by the end of it you'll have a newfound appreciation of the art and hard work that goes into making a video game. And if you still somehow haven't, play Cuphead. That's one of the best looking games, period. And yeah, tabletop games exist where the very gimmick is that it plays out in your imagination. While the general population yearns for graphical enhancements such as ray tracing and higher resolutions, Sometimes it feels like we skipped over 4K, I mean, the 3090 can already do 8K pretty well with DLSS. However, as the old adage says, don't judge a book by its cover, or in this case, don't judge a game by its graphics. Take a step back, because often it's more than that, there's intention behind it. Unless it's Life of Black Tiger, just no. No. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, it truly helps out a lot. Feel free to give feedback or criticism in the comments below. Leave a like and tell me what I did right, or leave a dislike and give me some criticism. Once again, thank you for watching.